So you guys may have heard of our next speakers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is our dad. Please, <laughs> <laughs> please welcome Jordan Hello. Stevens. Hello. Hello. Alexander Saul. Hello. And Darth of Beast from Island Records. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Boss man, boss man. It's going to be one of those mornings, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, uh, welcome to our next generation. Um, so, I think everyone here kind of knows uh, your music and what you produce. Maybe. They might not know the story of Rizzle Kick, so can you just tell a little bit about how uh, you met each other and how you put your first YouTube video out and how, and how you. Can I just say, firstly, like following Andy Serkis is <laughs> it's like revolutionising kind of film, and we're here like, yeah, we made a video like four years ago. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, we, we've been mates since we were like, since we were very young actually and um, a series of coincidences drew us together. So like we kind of moved to Brighton at the same time. We grew up in North London. And then, uh, and then we went to a Brit school, um, which people will know, maybe for the wrong reasons, maybe for the right reasons. Uh, a lot of great people have come out of that college. We actually, neither of us did music. Harley did theatre and I did media. And then um, one day, Harley said to me when... Uh, Oi, Jordan, I'm thinking of going to acting school. And that's that's why you call it acting school. <laughs> Isn't that what it's called? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. it is acting school. It's drama school. And I was like, no, I've got an idea. I'm doing this thing, Rizzle Kicks, yeah? Why don't you sing on it? And he was like, all right. And I said, leave drama school for a year. <laughs> you could have potentially ruined my life. You could have, I could have ruined his life, yeah, four months. Anyway, we made, a, we, um, yeah, we made, we made five demos, made a, a video, and... Uh, the right people saw it, and then, yeah, we got signed. And the right people being sat right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how you came across these guys. Um, like, like most acts that we've been successful over the past five, seven years, um, uh, I was, we were finding them online. And, um, uh, and I think what was crystal clear about, about the Rizzle Kicks when my head of A&R showed me the video, I think it was, um, it was the first trumpet. Was it Mr. Gret? Was it Trumpets? Trumpets. Yeah, it, was yeah. Trumpets. it was Trumpets, down with the Trumpets. And it was, crystal, it was clear as day that they actually had uh, an idea of what they wanted to be um, and what they wanted to stand for. And uh, I, I remember watching it, and there was, there, was one, there was one clip where you both were holding teacups, having a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that completely went against the grain of what rappers should be doing <laughs> in the kitchen, having a cup of tea, making some toast. Um, so your mum is in one of the videos, is that right? Huh? Is it your mum? Your mum yeah, my mum is in one of the videos, yeah. But can I say one thing, actually? Because I was, sorry, like, because I was just remembering when you were talking about, like, the journey, right? I, I was, um, I was thinking about, I was tracking back a pivotal point in which I felt things kind of changed, um, which wasn't necessarily down to, like, work ethic or... I feel like if you work hard enough, you get more lucky. Do you know what I mean? The harder you work, the luckier you get kind of thing. And there was one point where I was walking along the end of my friend's road and he rung me and went, do you want to come round to mine for family drinks? I don't know if anyone's done family drinks before. If it's not your family, it's kind of dry, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was kind of, but I was just happened to be walking past the end of his road. So I was like, all right, I'll pop in. And in, and in these family drinks, I met his cousin who was going out with a guy called Toby, who, who made videos, and I started speaking to him, and he was like, yeah, I just made a video of our family's trip to Bath, again, dry. <laughs> Watched it, amazing, like, and then we were like, oh, dude, we've got to do a video, and then that, that video happened to be done with the trumpet, so it's just kind of weird to think that, you know, I think you kind of, you work, and then life kind of carves these opportunities for you, and without meeting him. And at that point as well, he'd never done a music video. Yeah. He'd kind of, he was, he was like essentially a wedding photographer yeah. who's just got an amazing eye for like lighting and, 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 and direction, I suppose. So yeah, he was very lucky. Very lucky very yeah, lucky. yeah, it was like a brilliant, you know, you, you, yeah, we kind of, as he developed his video skills, we were developing his artists, so it's cool. Collaborative, yeah. Harley, what, at what point, so, you know, Island Records picked you up fairly quickly. Yeah. You got a lot of attention really fast. At what point did you realise my life's changed, I'm going to be a recording artist, and we can make a proper job out of this? Um, it's when I started getting taxis everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, I can afford to get on tubes. I don't know, I'm joking. I'm, uh, I'm joking. Um, You're not joking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a few points where, obviously, when you're performing live, I suppose, that's the, that's the biggest teller. Because um, even our first, our first uh, show, 
uh, with like a live band. It was supporting Eliza Doolittle in, in Bournemouth, oh, I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And this is our first kind of live show right, after making all the music with the band and everything. And the response was just insane. And, uh, and it was that point where I kind of thought, wow, we could, this is, I want to do this more and more and more. And then as, as we kind of were growing, like, we, could, we could, were starting to like, sell these like, really small, but intimate and nice venues, just like 200 people, a couple of people here and there. And, and, and that progression, you can kind of feel it all coming together. It all, it all kind of just makes sense at the same time. Yeah. And like, I remember when uh, Trumpets was released, it, we handed an on-air on sale thing with Trumpets. It wasn't just like, big promo and then bang, it's out. It was kind of just like, released to the world and then... If you radio, buy it, you buy it. If you buy it, you buy it. And then it just grew and grew and grew and grew. And it was like, it was, it was like number 38. And no, it was like number 78. And then it just jumped and it was like 38. And do you know what I mean? It was just, it was just all. And then Reggie Yates rung us. Oh, yeah, Reggie Yates. <laughs> we were just at our mate Hunter's house, just playing FIFA. Yeah. This is, and like, this Surreal. is what we just do, like, drinking. Fuck, oh, sorry. <laughs> drinking uh, <laughs> Fosters and just doing nothing but playing FIFA. And just got a call from my management saying, like, oh, you, you're in the charts. Uh, Reggie's going to give you a call to talk about it. And we're like, oh my God, OK. Um, yeah. So we had to kind of talk with all our friends present, uh, heckling and playing FIFA. It was quite funny. Now, Darkus, you joined Highlanders an intern, is that right? Did you, yeah. ever, did you ever foresee that you'd one day rise to be president <coughs> signing and working acts with, oh, with God, yeah, I, I knew from the day I worked in the building that I was going to rule the world. Um, <laughs> no, it, you know, it was, it's, I think, when you're the age of a lot of these people in here, you just uh, want to be excited about what you want to do. Um, you want to be passionate about what you want to do, and and hopefully you, you get a, you, you want to get a job doing what you, what you're passionate about. And I was I was lucky, right time, right place. I I just think that I just wanted to be associated with good people and good music, and um, and and everything else that would be a byproduct of that. So, you know, whether it was working with the Rizzles or with Amy Winehouse or with Florence and the Machine. Put um, in that bracket. <laughs> You're great. Um, you know, it was it, it was just about being associated, or uh, uh, the record label being associated with um, these like-minded artists, because you know they are the reasons why I, I've got a job. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember it. Don't worry. <laughs> it right. works both ways, though. You're yes. also the reason why we yeah, have a job. Yeah, you are <laughs> How did you guys deal with being so successful? At a young age, obviously you had a different kind because you guys were dealing with fame as well. You were, you know, dealing with working for a big company. But you it's know. funny, you know, it's um, you you hope that you hope that success doesn't make you forget why you started it, and uh, and at the point of what, what why you started it because success takes you a long way from from where you first start and that memory of where you first started, and I, and I always try and. Uh, reset and, I, uh, and assume that the success hasn't happened because I want to get back to that place where I, I was fearful, where I was excited. And I think artists should be the same after every, uh, after every, after every um, success, or whatever moment that is, because I believe we're all one step away from oblivion. So, yeah. um, Do I, you guys feel that way? What, in terms of... No. <laughs> what, keeping... No, I, th I, think, I think we've been quite fortunate in that the, the people we've kept around us during our journey have been reasonably grounding. Like, we've got mates who are literally just... They don't care. Like, you know, you, you turn around and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, they'll be like, whatever, mate, come on, we go in pub or not. You know what I mean? That kind of thing, which is good, good people to have around, and your parents and, like, people have known you since school kind of thing. But um, to go back to what you said before, like, it, it, w it, was, it, it was incredibly surreal becoming famous at a young age, um, because, because you're, you're forced into a kind of like responsibility that <laughs> you're not maybe supposed to be doing. Like, if you saw how our mates acted now, if we replicated any of that, <laughs> we'd get in serious trouble. Like, do you know what I mean? It's kind of, they're on a journey through, you know, university and like becoming a young adult and like, you know, um, pushing boundaries and morals and knowing what's right and wrong. And like, we kind of got thrown in a situation where it's like, right, now you're a role model to kids. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I haven't grown up yet. <laughs> Which is why people like Bieber have lost the plot. Because like, he hasn't, <laughs> because he hasn't, do you know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's important to keep those people around. And it's a bit weird when people look over at you, like I thought someone was, something was wrong with me for like, the first start <laughs> people in cafes be like, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I all right? <laughs> but, um, yeah. You guys, uh, obviously, YouTube and, and things like that have been a big part of your success. You've got m enormous following on Twitter, and you guys, you know, talking to your fans all the time. Uh, how important is that to you? To you? Like, you guys, it, it certainly seems like you're doing that yourself. And also, how dark is how important is that to the industry these days that you're kind of talking to people out here all the time, and that you've got people with you all the time? Well, I mean, uh, I think, I think. What's interesting is that I think our, our rise was actually at the same time as kind of like a huge burst in, in social networking, um, which I think has almost kind of surpassed us now. I'm kind of catch up with it. Like, I'm like what Vine? Like, oh, no, it's not like it. <laughs> like, what's Vine? <laughs> but like, we, 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 we had the, the YouTube was kind of popular. You know, it was, it's, it was just carried on. Um, but it was reasonably popular to the point where labels would be looking at YouTube videos, you know, rather than going to gigs. They're going, oh, these guys have made a cool video with a Canon 5D. Who are young filmmakers in the, in the crowd? Anyone got a... Right, so you know that, like, now with Canon have, like, reinvented the wheel, basically, in terms of music videos. You can go down to your shop, get a cam camera with a decent lens and be saved up for a few months or something, and make a music video. So it's, that was what we used to our advantage. And then, like, Twitter, you know, I'm quite a mouthy, as you noticed, and I can put that into characters, which is great. Um, but Instagram, for example, wasn't a part of our, our uprise. Like, we, we weren't using Instagram. That came about since our popularity. And it's interesting seeing how other people are now, mm. like, huge on Instagram and not even any followers on Twitter. It's mad. Like, it is, it's completely two different worlds. But it is important because you need to keep people engaged and that's something that we still need to improve on because it's kind of gone past us and we need to, like, you know, keep people... Knowing what we're doing, you know, whilst keeping respect for ourselves, it's a tough game, I think. But it's, it's, it is very important to kind of to keep people um, wanting more or involved in your story without you know, selling yourself too much. I think. What do you look for now? You've got all these people, and we're going to have some people on the stage later who've done kind of incredible things and got these enormous following uh, on 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 YouTube and Twitter and stuff. But how do you look for for that kind of spark? How do you recognise the um, <clears throat> kind of guys? Uh, there's loads of different ways of, of, of uh, well, I have uh, loads of people have different opinions how it all comes together. But for me, it's um, you know once <clears throat> the, the, the beautiful thing about YouTube or having a lappy or a Canon is that you know people you don't you don't have to wait for gatekeepers to let you through the gate. You know it, that's that's that was the most potent thing for me. So you know when I when we came across the Rizzle Kicks or we came across Jesse J. They weren't waiting for people to say, can I exist, please? They weren't asking for permission. They were just going out and opening up the laptop and singing into the lappy. Um, these guys were going out with their mate that they met at a drinks party, family <laughs> drinks party and, and made really cutting edge videos that we would have struggled to do as a record company with, with video commissioners. So, you know, that's... That, you know, Mumford and Sons, they were already gigging. They already had people turning up to come and see them. They'd already put out a couple of EPs. So... As long as people aren't waiting for, or, or come knocking, or try and give me a CD, you know, those days were over. Those were the 90s. Um, uh, if someone gave me a CD now, I think uh, it's the same as someone trying to give me a cassette. So, does anyone know what a cassette is? Please tell me people. <laughs> I, was, um, I was in, um, I'd, I had um, a meter, I had some 15-year-olds in my office a couple of months ago. And it was one of the most scariest moments I'd ever had. Um, they were from the old Kent Road. Uh, they were all in their school uniform, and they'd come to see me. They were doing a walk around the building, and um, they came in, and they said, what's that? And I had a, a, a vinyl on, on oh, no. resting against my window. And I said, that's, what, what, what the window? Or what, the what, what? They said, no, no, what's that? And I picked it up, and I went, this is record. This is vinyl. And they went, what's that? Oh, and I took it out of the sleeve. And it's, and it's obviously to them, it's just this round black disc shape with grooves in it. And, um, and they said, so what, if you rub your hands across it, will it still play? <laughs> and and all, all of them, all, not, there wasn't one or two, it was all of them that didn't know what it was. So I put it on and I put the needle on the record. I said, can you hear that? It's, cra it's called Crackle. So the needle on the record. I said, can you hear that? And I was like, hear what? <laughs> it's like the ears weren't even tuned to the frequencies. So, it, you know, it was an eye-opener in, in terms of... And, and that, that, in terms of... It didn't depress me. It, it made me excited. Um, it was a tiny bit of depression. But, um, <laughs> but it, it, it made me excited because, you know, we are firmly in the future. And, um, you know, and how, how young people are consuming... How you're coming to music, how you're consuming music. You know, it's freaked us all out in record companies and we're trying to 
um, understand the habits. And um, but it's it's exciting because it shows that there is um, a, a, a strong future for music. Good. I'm going to ask a couple more questions, then we're going to open it out to the floor. So if you've got a question you want to ask these guys, then just think about it, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll put the lights up in a minute. But do put your hand up. That's that uh, that's to tell us I've got to start oh, asking the audience. Okay. I want to ask one more thing first, which is how uh, how important was it for you guys? Like, who? How did your parents react? Who were your who were your mentors? Because it's you know you guys are doing this very young age, uh, and it's it's important to have people look, look, like looking out for you. And it seems like the people in your life uh, were really there for you and really supportive of your dreams. Because you know a lot of people would say you know go and follow a traditional education or traditional career. Yeah. So, uh, how important has that been, and how is it important is it for uh, parents in this room to get their, look after their kids and encourage them to do that stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who are your mentors? Um, wow. Well, like, funny enough, and as weird as it sounds, when we kind of started out, I feel like Jordan was my main mentor <laughs> because I hadn't I hadn't experienced I, I like like Jordan said before I was I was an actor that's what I studied and and me, I liked singing but it wasn't really my main thing and 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 when and Jordan was kind of the first person who really gave me that push to like enter into it and he and he was the person who gave me confidence to be able to sing. Um, no, Nelson would really like. Even myself could even would even believe it at the time, and and, and like I, can't, I suppose my mum didn't even really know that I could <laughs> sing either. Um, so it's nice that like, the fact that we're still that we that we're still here and like I think every day like I still can learn something from from Jordan. That's, that's what's so good about having like your best friend as as your work colleague. Um, it's uh, <laughs> um, oh, come on, stop it. <laughs> same it, it, with you though, man. Honestly, the same with you. Oh, cheers, mate. Um, but yeah, I feel, I feel like I feel like we, we have a, a great balance and and and, and yeah, and yin and yang vibes. Yeah, <laughs> heavily yin and yang. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I learned from you how to just be calm. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we do learn from each other every day. I'd say also just to, uh, just to be, I, I have to you know, shout out to my mum really because she she has been incredibly um, supportive of me all my life, and she actually said to me at a young age, "Is like do whatever you want," kind of thing. So like I would be, oh, I don't know if I should say this. Yeah, I gotta say it. I, 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 would, I would basically say to my mum with school projects, right? I loved making school projects, like the little folders and stuff, and like you go to Staples Corner and like go Staples and like print off on like nice paper, like Amazon rain, Amazonian animals in the rainforest, like ha! Ah. And uh, but like I couldn't do it at school, so my mum would always be like, right, I'm giving you one day where you're sick, and then you can do the project and hand it in the next day. I'm not saying that should happen. <laughs> I'm just saying it works for me because, and my mum was supportive of the fact that I couldn't work in that environment because I was really easily distracted. Um, but for, unfortunately for her, the do whatever you want thing heavily backfired when I became 15, 16. And she was like, can you do some washing up? Like, no, don't want to. <laughs> and then, uh, and, but I told her I was going to take over the world and, that was, and she let me kind of lock myself in my room and try and do that. So I had to give props to her for that, yeah. Okay, I think we're going to open it up to the floor. So we've got some microphones. So... If you've got a question, put your hand up. We're going we're to pick out the audience. We've got, we've got one just here on the end of this row. Yeah, oh, we've, got a mic, we've already got a mic there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you stand up? Yeah. Um, hi, guys. Um, basically, I know, because like, I follow you guys, your music's great and that, yeah. But um, I know you both got into acting like, lately. I know you've got a film out and you're on E4 and stuff. And I want to be an actor myself. I'm trying to get agent, etc. But, like... How how did you guys go about that? Because I know obviously you've got links because you're, you know, like stars in music, but acting is a different thing. So like, yeah. how did you go about that and stuff? Well, like you said, like, l luckily for us, like we do have that kind of we have those connections um, uh, with with because of kind of we've kind of bypassed a lot of things you have to go through as an actor. Cause I've got a lot of friends who. Uh, I went to college with and whatnot, and I don't want to put like a damper on it at all. But it's just like, like that. It's like it's a seriously tough world, man. Because I've got all, a lot of like got a close knit group of friends who are actors, and 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 they'll never give up. They'll never give up. That's that, that's the main thing about it is uh, is never giving up because they they go to audition after audition after audition. Some years they'll get two auditions in a year. 
But it doesn't matter because as soon as you get that one thing, that's when you take off. And what's hard in this generation is that actors are becoming, they're becoming more successful as they get older. So don't worry about if you're, as, as a young actor, as a young actor, if you're not getting the roles, because as you get older, people, they're looking for like people who are like early 30s these days, late 20s, do you know what I mean? And well, also, that, also, so just to shut that, don't worry about getting, act, becoming famous and acting too quickly, because yeah, like, look yeah. at Lindsay Lohan, mate. <laughs> exactly. Look at Lindsay Lohan and then look at Steve Carell. It's, Steve it's all about a gradual build, I feel, and I, I think if you pursue it for long enough, then it will, it will eventually happen. Yeah. Got someone on the end of the second row there in the blue hoodie. Um, is it hard oh. to? Oh, sorry. There's another one first. Sorry, two seconds. Is it hard to keep up with the demands of like social media? Like, if you want, if you're an artist and you didn't want to put everything on Twitter or something, like, is that difficult because you know yeah. everyone's yeah. going to yeah. ask you to? <laughs> I get annoyed with them. <laughs> yeah. It's super. We had we had like a little we had a little. Um, when we were promoting the last single we released, we had that kind of conversation with the label because, like, we had like a kind of a, a social media crisis in that, like, we'd got to the stage where we were like, I don't want to show people what I'm doing. Like, on Instagram, it's just like, you need to take more pictures of what you're doing. Like, well, I don't want anyone to know what I'm doing. I want to just, like, do my own thing. Like, but, then it, but, then you, but then you start to put up pictures and you get the feedback from your fans and you realise, oh, actually, it's quite nice for people to kind of have an idea. And plus, you can lie. <laughs> so he doesn't lie. He doesn't lie. I mean, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, if you see a picture of like a brick wall, I can see I'm anywhere. So like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Venice, killing it. <laughs> instruments. Sorry. Music. Can you play any music? Do you play any musical instruments? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harley, Harley's, uh, Harley's pretty, yeah, pretty good guitar. Oh uh, yeah, I play guitar and I play a bit of piano and bass, but that comes hand in hand playing guitar, I suppose. It's um, a, yeah, it's just, uh, although music is evolving to the point in which you may not need instruments, <gasps> <laughs> it is still pretty important to have that and it's nice to have that flavour, definitely. If you're not learning one, you should learn one. One more question. <laughs> or right, we've got one at the back now. Um, yeah, do you have any advice to give to people that actually want to become music engineers or singers. Right. Engineers? Yeah, music engineers. Well, like, the, like actually to doing the mixing yeah. and the mastering. And producers, do you have any advice? I think, I think what, what's, what is interesting about uh, uh, someone who works in, within a studio environment is that you have the option of experience. Do you know what I mean? So if I was in your position and wanting to work in the technical side of things with you to be, a, to be singing as well, you can just like find someone you know must be producing or know someone at a studio you can ask to do the tea. You know, Darkest did that with the label. Do the tea and then you just gradually build up, do you know what I mean? And then next thing you know, you're mastering, I don't know, someone awesome's album. Or there are tech schools. There are a lot of tech schools um, that have um, places where you can go and spend your days in studios learning how to mix at the desk. There's lots of them. Yeah, experience, man. It's the best way to learn through experience. That's what I believe in anyway. Please, everyone, give a massive round of applause. Let me take some Thank you.